Okay, what I'm about to show you is the five step method that I developed in med school to help me master any subject I come across. It is the exact sequence of events I followed whenever I need to do an oral presentation, a lecture, or if I just want to dominate a particular subject. Now, as a quick disclaimer, the specifics you're going to see in the video are going to be relevant to medicine, but you can really apply the underlying principles of the steps to almost any discipline out there. And so, let's get to it. Okay, so let's jump right into it. The five steps are first, deciding your study resources. Second, building a skeleton. Third, taking effective notes. Fourth, testing yourself. And the last one, what was the last one? integrating everything. The first step is deciding your study resources. And the point I wanna make crystal clear here is that you don't need to bury yourself with readings to master a subject. Most of the stuff out there, especially in medicine, can be well covered with just a few resources. Personally, I always try to look for three types of resources. The first one is a general type of reading, something that can give me an overview of the whole subject and take me through the step by step of it all. For this, I usually go with review articles because they're short, sweet, go to the point and are updated. To look for them, all you have to do is put the name of the subject you want to learn, for example, hypertension and the word review by its side. You'll find tons of articles. One pro tip I have here is to start looking for the article in the image section. You'll find that the quality of the image tends to correlate with the quality of the article. The second type of resource is an in-depth type of database, something with tons of information about a specific subject. I usually go with UpToDate here since it has this awesome clinical database that can pretty much cover everything you need to know. And I usually use these databases as a way to search for images, for algorithms, and to clear up a specific doubts that may come up as I learn the topic. But I wanna be clear here. I don't usually read all of the articles of a topic because depending on the topic, there may be 20, 30 articles available and well, that's just not practical. The third type of resource is actually a video. And I have found videos to be my secret key to learning medicine because they break down subjects in very easy ways. For the basic sciences, I usually go with Boards and Beyond since I have found them awesome at explaining basic concepts. And for the clinical videos, I usually go with the University of Louisville lectures. They are great, and if you haven't checked them out, I highly recommend you to do so. And that's pretty much it. Three resources are all you need to really grasp 90 to 95% of everything you need to know. And sure, if you read more articles or see more videos, you probably learn a couple things more, but you'd really start seeing diminishing returns. The more you read, the less you get out of every reading. The second step is building your skeleton. And this is probably the most important step of the whole process. Because you see, for me, understanding and really comprehending a subject goes far beyond just getting things into our own words. And I mean, sure, translating things is important, but at least for me, I believe that knowing and understanding how everything fits together, how this story tells itself from beginning to end, is far, far, far more important than just understanding each concept in an isolated manner. And so my approach to taking notes is to organize my ideas of how I wanna tell the story before I even start reading about it. In that way, whenever I do start reading, all I have to do is to really organize the information into groups or into boxes to tell the story that I wanna tell. And I know that I'm probably explaining this a little bit too mystical, but it's really not. It's just understanding what's the train of thought that you wanna follow whenever you try to explain this subject. And believe me, just doing that, just organizing your ideas of how do you wanna explain a subject or understand a subject before you start reading the specifics makes all of the difference. Everything becomes so much easier and your notes get faster and more organized as well. That leads me to the third step, which is actually taking effective notes. And there are thousands of tips that I could give you over here when it comes to notes. But the thing I wanna concentrate on this video is to tell you that you have to learn how your mind works and try to look for a system that can help you maximize that mentality. You see, there are three types of people out there. The first one of them is actually the type of people that are very vertical, very rigid, and think in a very straightforward manner. And for those type of people, usually the vertical note-taking system, which is just taking point after point after point in a hierarchical order, works great. Then there are the people who are all over the place, who can't think in a vertical manner. 
and use things like mind maps and those type of things work better for them. And then there's people like me who hate taking vertical notes but hate the mess that mind maps usually carry with them. And I struggled between those two systems for years during medical school, jumping from one to another until I eventually created my own note-taking system. I created a two-axis note-taking system. So I organized the main ideas, or my skeleton basically, in a vertical manner. And then each one of those categories, I filled them with information horizontally. For me, this is the best combo, because whenever I need to think about a subject, five to six headings, or my vertical skeleton, come to mind, just like in a mind map happens, and they give me a train of thought to follow. But I can also expand at will in a more organized manner horizontally, avoiding all the mess that a mind map has. And I don't know if this system already existed, but in case it didn't, I'm naming it the Santiago AQ ultimate effective two-axis note-taking system. I should probably think of a better name though. The fourth step is to test yourself. And the point here is to have an objective standard that could tell you if you understand everything you needed to, or if you missed something big, or if you have to delve deeper into some concept. I personally use the Ambos Cuban here, since it has this awesome feature in which you can make a Q&A session of just a specific subject but you can really use whatever you happen to have at hand. There are tons of other great Q-Banks or books with Q&As, or even long clinical cases like the ones the New England Journal of Medicine publishes now and then. Finally, the last step is to try to integrate everything you learned, and there are several ways to do this, but the one I recommend the most is using the Feynman technique. You just have to pretend to be explaining the subject to someone who doesn't know anything about it, just try to be as specific and detailed as possible. If during your explanation something's foggy, go ahead and review it further. If you tend to forget some details along your explanation, consider doing some flashcards about it. And that's pretty much everything I need to do whenever I need to master a subject. In fact, most of the lectures on my Spanish YouTube channel have been created just using these five steps. But anyways, that was it for the video. I hope you found it useful. If you want to support this channel for me to continue uploading free content for you, please consider subscribing, liking this video, sharing with your friends and leaving a comment. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in that next video.